Hi, my name is Claire Ryan. I'm the coordinator of the Midwest Invasive Plant Network and of the Woody Invasives of the Great Lakes or the Wiggle Collaborative. In this video, I'll be talking about the invasive tree black alder, sometimes also called European black alder, Alnus glutinosa. I'll tell you briefly about the species history and current status in North America, why it's invasive, and then we'll look at how to identify it in the field. Black alder is broadly native to Europe and to Northern Turkey. It's unclear when exactly it was brought to North America, but it was considered to have a widespread presence in the Great Lakes region by the early 1900s. It's occasionally used as a landscape plant, though it's not terribly popular, perhaps because it's rather messy. It's occasionally used in poorly drained riparian urban parks, and it's also occasionally used as a nurse tree on mine reclamations and other extremely disturbed sites. Today it occurs outside of cultivation in most states in the northeast quarter of the continental U.S. and in Ontario, Canada. It tends to be most invasive in riparian forests and wetlands where it can form dense thickets. Its seeds are typically distributed by gravity, so seedlings tend to grow under the parent plant. In riparian areas, floodwaters can carry the seeds to new locations. When it becomes established in wetlands, it can be very disruptive to the ecosystem, impacting water movement, nutrient cycling, and soil formation. The setting I'm in right now is an urban park undergoing native restoration, so they're planting native trees and wetland vegetation under this black alder where the trees they're planting have to compete with the black alder seedlings. At maturity, black alder is a large tree growing up to 50 feet in height and about 35 feet across with a pyramidal shaped crown. Its young bark is a medium gray and smooth with raised white pores, while older bark is medium gray and forms flattened plates. Leaves are alternately arranged and are oval to rounded in shape with a rounded or slightly notched tip. The closest look alike is native speckled alder, which is overall a much smaller plant, but also has elliptical shaped leaves with bluntly pointed tips. Leaves of black alder are two to four inches long and three to four inches wide with coarsely double toothed edges. The leaf surfaces are glossy and dark green. Young leaves may be covered in a gummy resin. Some horticultural variations exist, including lobed leaves and variegation, which means the leaves are white and green. Flowers are born on catkins in winter or early spring before the leaves emerge. Male catkins are two to four inches long and rust colored with yellow pollen, while female catkins are about a half inch long, rounded and pink. The fruits are small cones, less than an inch long, which mature from green to brown by late fall and persist on the tree. In the spring, it's not unusual to see last year's cones and the current year catkins on the tree at the same time. If you have black alder on your property, we recommend that you remove and replace it, especially if it's growing in or near a wetland or running water. But keep in mind that soil disturbance tends to promote new seed germination, so you'll need to watch for new seedlings as you manage. Lots of great native plants are available for wet and riparian areas, including sycamore, American beech, and several birch species. To learn more about control techniques for black alder and suitable landscape alternatives, check out our website, that's woodyinvasives.org, and please subscribe to our channel for more useful videos like this one.